Hi, my name is Sebastian König and you are watching a short demo of the tracking workflow in Blender. So first of all, you go to the motion tracking layout. Next, you open up your footage and then prefetch it into the memory. Then control left click to place a marker and then you can track it forward. That should go very fast, so let's add another one and track that backwards. You can also use different motion models for more precise tracking, for example the affine motion model that will distort with your footage. You can scale markers with S and enable the display of the search area with Alt S. So you can see how it deforms with your footage. So let's just add another one. Scale down the search area to make tracking a little bit faster and then track it backwards. When you've finished tracking a marker, you can lock it with Ctrl L, so to say to freeze it. And if you want to have a more automatic way of tracking, you can use the Detect Features button. That will automatically add a bunch of markers, which you can then also track forward. Now, some of them will lose their track. So again, let's freeze them with Ctrl L and then run the feature detection in the end once more and track those backwards. Then to inspect your tracks, you can use the curve view in Blender and then also select and erase some of the bad tracks. That looks all right, so we can go ahead and solve that. Blender has a very powerful solver that can also estimate and refine your focal length and the lens distortion parameters. Solve the camera motion and you can see in the lens panel now you have these lens distortion parameters. Now to improve the situation let's clean up some tracks that are too short or where the solve error is too high. Just erase those tracks and solve again. Solve error of 0.3 is very good, so we can choose three markers to establish a floor plane, then choose one for the origin and one for the x-axis. After that, let's choose two markers and set up a scale for our scene. And then set up the tracking scene. And this will set up everything for you. The camera constraint, a background plane and even some render layers. You can also see that you have render undistorted in the 3D viewport, which is calculated on the fly. So now we can use this to model our scene. So if you render that, you can see there's already a lamp and the render layer set up. You can check out the render layers in the 3D viewport. Change the materials and then import a model and render that. So without having to import or export anything, you can track your footage, place your 3D models and render and composite all in one application. And if you want to learn more about that, subscribe to cloud.blender.org and watch the first part of the new and updated course Track Match Blend. See you there!